Pastor Valentine began our morning service. And this is a beautiful day, the day that we've never seen before. And we come to give God the praises. Hallelujah! 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 He's worthy to be praised this morning. That's all you want to hear from us. Thank the Lord. For let us see another day. Another day we've never seen before. We come to the Lord and be glad in it. And this time we want to ask everyone to stand and to cry. You're ready to usher the Holy Spirit.
this morning. Thank you, Brother Jamil, for allowing the Lord to use it. The 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not walk. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in a path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thou rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord
We pray all of us in Jesus' precious holy name. Let the church say amen. Amen, amen. We're not going to turn this part of the service back over to the choir. And after this next selection, we will hear none other than our own Reverend Turgeon Davis. Come on, let's give him a round of applause. He's been a preacher, he's been a preacher. Let's say amen, amen. Yes, sir. <laughs>
just won't be helped. So at a time like this, I need the Lord to help me the whole time.
of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. Verse 26, and after eight days again, his disciples were within and Thomas was with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut and stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. I want to talk for a few minutes on the subject. I've seen him for myself. And just tell somebody I've seen him for myself. There are just certain things that I have to see for myself. Some things are just too important for he say, she say. Some things are too important and I don't want to hear somebody told me to tell you. When, when somebody gets a car, you just can't tell the car dealership I have good credit. They want to see it. But when your child tells you that they've done all of their homework, you don't just take their word for it. Sometimes you want to see it. When someone wins the lottery, you just can't say, I won. They want to see the ticket. And that is just like our text today. When the disciples hear that Jesus is alive, they don't want to just hear it, but they want to see it for themselves. And I have to catch you up this morning because before we can get to our text, there are some things we need to remember. After the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, the world was torn upside down. The disciples wanted to know, what do we do now? The women wanted to see what would happen with his body. God was summoned to wait by the sepulcher, but as we heard on Resurrection Sunday, that the grave couldn't hold him down. Death could not defeat him. Jesus got up early on the third day morning with all power in his hand. And I have to tell somebody, he is still alive today. Now, now when Jesus rose from the dead, scripture records of St. Matthew chapter 28 yes, that there was a great earthquake yes, sir. Yes, sir. for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven the angel that rolled the stone away his countenance was like lightning and his raiment was white as snow and for fear the keepers got so scared that they went in the shock and became as dead men the thing is, when the presence of God is revealed, everybody can't take it. Everybody can't stand it. There's a different reaction. You see, here we see Mary standing and talking with the angel and the security guards are on the floor like dead men. And she was told to go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And when the soldiers finally regained their consciousness, they went to report back to their superiors that Jesus was alive. The soldiers were told, don't let this news get out. Uh, we, we will give you some money. We'll give you a promotion. But you can't let this news get out. They, they said if this gets out, it'll be on CNN, MSNBC, ABC, and CBS. If this news gets out, it'll be on Twitter and Instagram. If, if this news gets out, it'll be all over Facebook. We cannot let this get out. But I'm so glad this morning that the news got out, that the word got out. I'm, I'm so glad that this good news was spread all around town. This good gospel, 
the Evangelion. The gospel of Jesus Christ. The E-U-A double G-E-L-I-O-N. The Epsilon, Upsilon, Alpha, Double Gamma, Epsilon, Lambda, Iota, Omicron, Nu. This good gospel could not be contained. News that everybody needs to hear. It's been over 2,000 years and it's still breaking news today that Jesus is alive. Jesus decided, I'm going to stay around here for about 40 more days and just show up whenever I get ready so that men will know that my body was not stolen but they will know that I got up from the dead. And you see, there is a difference between Jesus and these other so-called gods with a lowercase g. And you see, Confucius died, but he couldn't get up. Buddha died, but he could not get up. The leaders of Taoism and Taoism, they died, but they could not get up. But I thought, the word that was made flesh and dwelt among us, he died but early on the third day morning. He got up with all power in his hand. Now we see here in our text that John is adequately describing the scene for us. John takes time and goes into detail to tell us the things that were happening. Uh, he, he's not like Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Those are synoptic gospel, but John gets right to the point. And in this Johannine gospel, that we see some of the appearances of Jesus Christ after his resurrection, there are about 11 instances where Jesus comes up on the scene after the resurrection. Sometime while the disciples were gathered together, Jesus would just show up. Sometimes it would just be two or three of them and Jesus would just show up. And this is letting me know today that it doesn't take a whole lot of people to get Jesus to move. But at first we see his appearance to Mary Magdalene. In John chapter 20, verse 15, where she thought he was the gardener. Jesus said to her, why weepest thou? She said, sir, if you know where they took my Lord, please tell me so I can take him. Then Jesus called her by her name and said, Mary. When she heard his voice, she immediately said unto him, Master, and when you hear the master's voice, it sounds different than everybody else's voice. You know the master's voice because it's written, my sheep hear my voice, and a stranger they will not follow. I just want to hear the master's voice. And then that evening, he appeared to ten of the disciples because Judas has hung himself and Thomas was not there during this occasion. Twelve minus two equals ten. I believe I have that right. The scripture records that the door was shut where the disciples were because of fear of the Jews. But Jesus showed up in their midst and said, Peace be unto you. And he stretched out his hand so they could see the nail prints in his hands and so they could see the nail print in his side. Then the disciples were glad when they knew it was Jesus. And just like these disciples, when we think about what Jesus has done for us, we ought to get glad. You, know, you ought to be glad when you think about where you were and how he brought you to where you are now. 
You, you ought to get glad when you begin to think what should have happened, what could have happened, what would have happened. He could have let me die in my sin. He could have let me drown in my iniquities. But I'm here today because God kept me. And I'm here today because of his grace and his mercy that he saw fit to spare my life. Somebody ought to tell him thank you today. And after they had seen Jesus, this gets up to our scripture this morning. They told Thomas, one of the twelve called Didymus. They called them this because Thomas is a name of Hebrew or Aramaic descent. And Didymus in the Greek means twin. So this was just a nickname that they called him. But we know him as Doubting Thomas. The disciples came to him. They said they had seen Jesus. But he said unto them, except I shall see his hands and the print of the nails. And put my finger into the print of the nails and thrust my hand into his side. I will not believe. And many people give Thomas a, a bad reputation, but I'm not sure if Thomas was really a bad guy. I, I just, if I can eisegesis the text right quick. There's just some things I want to see for myself. All Thomas is saying is, before I get all excited, before I get to jumping and shouting and crying and rolling all over the floor, I just want to make sure this is real. It, it would be strange to me that Thomas just really didn't believe. But just a few chapters earlier in chapter 11 is the same Thomas. When they were going to Judea after hearing Lazarus was sick. And the disciples said, Master, the Jews are trying to stone you and they're trying to kill you. Why do you want to go there? Yeah. Thomas is the one that stood up and said, well, if you go, we're going to go with you for we shall die with him. Yeah. It is the same Thomas in chapter 14 when Jesus said, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, ye may be also. It's this same Thomas that speaks up and said, Lord, Lord, we know not whether thou goest. And if we don't know where you're going, how do we know the way? And this preface is Jesus to tell Thomas and his disciples, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Now this same Thomas just has some doubts that Jesus could be alive after such a painful death. I can imagine Thomas saying, I saw them beat him. I, I saw them place a crown of thorns on his head. I saw them put nails in his hands and in his feet. I, I saw the blood running down from his hands and his feet. I, I saw them pull flesh from his bone. I saw him hang his head and die. And there's no way somebody can live after a death like that. Thomas is saying, I hear what you're saying, but I just need to see it for myself. And as I head to my seat, I have a short amount of time and I'm wrapping this to a close. The disciples were in hiding. They believed that if they killed Jesus, that they must have been coming after them next. 
So on this occasion, Thomas was missing. The disciples were together, locked up in the house. And Jesus showed up in their midst. And about eight days later, the disciples were all together again. The doors were locked up. They put the latch on the door. And if I can bring it to modern day, they turned on their alarm system. But Jesus didn't have to knock on the door. Jesus didn't have to ring the doorbell. Jesus didn't have to announce that he was coming in. All Jesus did was walk through, walk through the door. And Jesus showed up in their midst. I'm trying to tell you this morning that Jesus don't have a set time. He does not have a program to abide by. He will just show up whenever he is ready. Can anybody be a witness this morning that in my life, when I was going through, I did not know what was going on around me, but I met Jesus for myself. When you were in that situation and you couldn't tell nobody about it, you had to meet Jesus for yourself. When you did not know how you were going to pay your bills, you had to meet Jesus for yourself. Thomas said, I have to see Jesus for myself. Jesus stretched forth his hand. He said, Thomas, I heard what you said. You said, except I see the nail prints in your hands. Thomas, I heard what you said. You said, unless you put your hand in the nail print. You said, unless you thrust your hand in my side. I will not, I will not believe. Jesus said, come in, Thomas. Look at my hand. Come in, Thomas. Look at my Come in, Thomas. Put your hand in my side. All Thomas could say was, My Lord and my God. When you're in God's presence, you don't have a long speech to say. Some dance when they're in His presence, some shout when they're in His presence, some have a few words. To say to Jesus, some tell him thank you, some tell him hallelujah, some tell him Lord I love you, some tell him Lord I need you, but all Thomas, all Thomas could say was my Lord and my God. Is there anybody here this morning that met Jesus for yourself? All you need to say is I know, I know the man because I met him, I met him for myself. It was all right when mama told me about him. It was all right when daddy told me about him. It was all right when I came to church and heard granddaddy talking about him. But one day, For myself, one day I had to try him for myself. The scripture said, All oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Has he been good this morning? It might be rough, 
somebody here is a witness that the Lord is still making a way. Somebody here is a witness that the Lord is still opening doors for me. Somebody here is still a witness that the Lord is still performing, still performing miracles. Do I have a witness? Do I have a witness? Just tell three people I met him for myself. Tell somebody I met him, I met him. I met him, I met him. I met the man. I met him for myself. Do I have a witness? that ever tried him. Don't you know he'll make a way for you? Won't he do it? I won't be here long. Won't he do it? Won't he make a way for you? Won't he dry your tears? Won't he give you joy and sorrow? Won't he give you hope for tomorrow? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he, 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 Somebody shout yeah. Wave your hand and shout yeah. Shout yeah. Shout yeah. Shout yeah. Yeah. I got to leave you now. But before I leave let me tell you, Jesus said to Thomas, I need to let you know, blessed are you, for you have seen and believed. But there are some people that are blessed who have believed and have not seen. You ought to tell somebody, I'm one of those. I have not seen him with my physical eyes. But I see him with my spiritual eyes. And the Lord said I'm blessed. I don't care what my finances say. I'm blessed. I don't care what your sickness is saying. I'm blessed. I don't care what nobody tell you. You're blessed, you're blessed. I'm blessed going in. I'm blessed going out. Bless me the fruit of my basket. Your family's blessed. Your children are blessed. I'm blessed. And the devil in hell can't do nothing about it. I know I'm blessed. I know. I know I'm blessed. Just tell somebody, I know I'm blessed. will give you rest in your situation. 
Can't nobody 